Hi, I'm Noel Rappin, the author of Rails 5 Test Prescriptions. RSpec is a very large and complex testing tool. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you 11 RSpec tips that you can use to make your testing more efficient. Tip 1. Prefixing the it method at the beginning of a test with an X to make exit tells RSpec you consider the test to be pending. A pending test is executed, but if the pending test fails, RSpec does not cause the entire suite to be failing. That makes pending tests a great way to mark a work in progress without interfering with test execution or a continuous integration build. If you want to mark an entire group of tests as pending, you can change describe to xdescribe. Tip 2. While we're prefixing, you can also change it to fit. The F stands for focus. Focus is an easy way to limit your test run to a specific set of tests. RSpec has a config option called filter run when matching. If you have tests with focus, RSpec automatically limits your test run to just those tests. Tip 3. With the configuration option example status persistence file path, RSpec maintains a text file of the most recent result of the run of each individual spec. You can see the run times for each spec, which is a good way to identify slow ones. Secondly, it enables a couple of command line options. The only failure option limits your test run to only tests that failed the last time they were run. And the next failure option does the same thing but stops the test run when one of those tests fails again. Tip 4. If you like the way the next failure option stops the entire test run on the first failure, you can get that behavior on any RSpec run with the fail fast option. Tip 5. If, on the other hand, you really don't like fail fast behavior and would rather fail as slowly as possible, you can add the metadata tag aggregate failures to any it or describe block. With that aggregate failures tag set, RSpec won't stop on a failure in a spec, but will show all the failing expectations in a single spec. Tip 6. You can get RSpec to show you the slowest specs in any test run with the profile option. At the end of the run, RSpec will present a list of the slowest specs and the slowest example groups. Tip 7. The default RSpec formatter doesn't give much information about what RSpec is doing. If you'd like to see the names of all the specs, you can try the format documentation option, which shows every spec name as it runs, although this can slow down your spec runs. Tip 8. If you find the documentation option too verbose, you can use custom formatters. I like 5mat, which shows the name of each file as it runs, giving a nice middle ground of information. There's also foobar, which gives a progress bar, and yancat, which is more colorful. Tip 9. You may know that if you include a file name or pattern on the RSpec command line, the test run will be limited to only that file. Also, if you append a colon line number to the file name, the spec or example group containing that line will be executed. But since the line number can change if you edit the file, there's an alternate syntax where you can use a number in brackets to indicate the order of the spec in the file. Tip 10. RSpec also uses the brackets internally to support the bisect feature. If you have an intermittent test failure that you think is caused by the interaction between two specs, bisect will try to create a command for a minimal set of specs that you can run to isolate the problem. Just run rspec bisect and let it go. If rspec discovers an intermittent failure, it will give you a pattern that you can run from the command line that isolates the problem. Tip 11. Here's a configuration tip from the railshelper.rb file. If you uncomment the line that starts with dir spec support, then RSpec will individually load each file in the spec support directory when it loads. This allows you to create separate RSpec configuration files for add-ons like Capybara or VCR, making them easier to manage than having all the configuration in a single helper file. These tips should help you run RSpec more efficiently, making your testing practice more useful. For more information on how to write better tests and how RSpec and Rails interact, check out the book Rails 5 Test Prescriptions by me, Noel Rappin.